today to you from this title regardless of the mountain regardless of the mountain regardless of the mountain I guess I could have named this one mountain who do you think you are <laughs> so however you if I personify it as the text does, because in verse 7, it doesn't ask, what are thou? It personifies the mountain. Who art thou, O great mountain? Amen. A mountain is a what? It's an object. It's a thing. It's, and my mountain is not a person. Who is used to uh, reflect when you're talking to people. So, who art thou? He personifies the mountain. Regardless of the mountain. Father, may we do no damage, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. This message today is about how faith and the power of God's spirit, faith in the power of the God of the Bible can overcome mountainous obstacles. Amen. Not mere obstacles. An obstacle is anything that gets in the way or hinders, but mountainous obstacles. Very large obstacles can be reduced to level ground if we have faith in God and act in accordance to his will. Now, we all face obstacles. Some from without, some from within, but they are obstacles nonetheless. Some obstacles are real and others are imagined. Some are legitimate, some are illegitimate, but they are obstacles nonetheless. Obstacles are impediments. Impediments delay or retard progress by interfering with normal actions. All of us contend with impediments, things that interrupt your normal flow. Are you, am I right? Amen. That delay uh, or retard the progress. You expected much. But because of the impediment, you didn't get what you expected. You end up having to settle. Or you expected it by a certain time, but the impediment made it arrive late. And in some cases, too late. Obstacles are also obstructions. Anything that blocks progress, as if by stopping up a passage, some people are obstructionists. They feel that their role in life is to keep you from doing what it is that you have set out to do. Amen. There are obstructionist spirits. As soon as you set a goal, there are demon spirits that decide it's not going to happen. Praise the Lord. People shack for years and then get married and get married and can't get along. That obstructionist spirit comes in and says, we're going to block this. We're going to block 
the flow. We're going to stop. It's like stopping a passage. You, you're going through a place and a spirit of obstruction stops it. Obstacles are hindrances. Anything that thwarts progress by holding back or by delaying. Obstacles are barriers. Things that seem to be insurmountable. Is there anything in your life that seems to be insurmountable? And, and, and it seems to be so large and uh, impenetrable that you just give up. Well, I, can't, I can't get past this. Obstacles. Gloria Griffith and Roberta Martin penned some timeless words. They asked, have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? And have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? I heard him say, God specializes in things thought impossible. And he will do what no other power, no other power but holy power can do. They go on to say, when your body is full of disease and your medicines, it don't give you ease. Are you friendless? Are you friendless and in despair? And nobody, nobody, nobody seems to care. Oh, he'll be right there. God specializes. And he will do what no other power, no other power but holy power can do. The words of this song are as true and relevant in 2019 as they were in 1958 when they were penned. In our text, the year was 519 B.C. In the month of February, on the 24th day of the month, in the second year of Darius the king, what we have here in our text is the fifth of eight visions that God gave the prophet Zechariah that night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, what a night. Eight visions in one night. Chapter 1, verse 7. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Sibat, that is February, the second year of Darius came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah. What a night. The context was faced with rebuilding the temple and city. God's chosen people. You've heard me talk about this. The exiles, the returnees felt small and powerless and overwhelmed. Obstacles were everywhere. And opposition came from without as well as from within. There were the obstacles of the Samaritans who occupied the land, who accused them of treason. And if you read sometime at your leisure, Ezra chapter 4, verse 6 through 24, you will see a coup attempt uh, by the Samaritans to thwart the work of the people of God. They wrote letters uh, to stop the progress, and they stopped it. They accused them of treason. It's almost like what you see in the news today. They did not want God's house to be rebuilt. Obstacles uh, also came from their own people, thinking that the odds against the project were insurmountable. And, you know, 
uh, Ezra had to contend, Zerubbabel had to contend with people who said, since we're getting so much resistance, we may as well give up. Study this in Ezra chapter 3 and verse 12 and in Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3. They had to send a word to encourage them because the people began to cave uh, uh, due to the pressure. There's a lot of that going on now. And uh, uh, the people are waiting to see what would cause us upper room to cave. So many churches now are caving. How are they caving? They're caving through indifference. They're caving uh, uh, by what they won't preach. Not necessarily what they do talk about, but it's what they omit. So as not to incur the wrath of the world. According to um, theological studies, that is, by definition, the falling away. The falling away that the Bible predicted would come would be when men, uh, it wasn't, wouldn't be that people would stop attending church, but that the church itself, the preacher, would not take positions that would incur the wrath of the world. So we find today that churches that the news like to cover. The churches that get favorable press from the newspapers and the media industry are churches that do not challenge the world. Praise the Lord. The preacher who is lauded is the preacher who, who praises the rapper or praises the athlete or praises the groups that take positions that are antithetical to the word of God. And they do this under pressure. And it happens on both sides. I said to some of my white, uh, some of my black brothers, I said, some of you guys have gained a conscience uh, since President Obama is no longer in the White House. That's right. But while he was president, and passing laws and, 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 and decked out the White House in homosexual colors, you said nothing. But I said to my white brethren, I said, but you too have been guilty of the same. For the preacher who is in the most powerful position to speak against racism in America is not the black preacher. It's the white preacher. But the white preacher knows that if he doesn't talk about it, uh, uh, if he talk about it, it'll hurt his money. He'll lose some of his donors because they're uncomfortable with hearing about the uh, racism uh, that's in America. And we've come a long way. Anybody who tells you that we haven't, they're lying. You lose credibility altogether if you say things hadn't improved. But we still have a ways to go. And I'm not necessarily saying we have a ways to go in terms of law. In terms of uh, uh, the, ju ju the judiciary and all that. Because I believe that we've gone almost, at, almost as far as we can go in terms of passing laws. But in terms of the preacher preaching against the hatred that is in someone's heart. There's a lot more that should be said. But it's got to be said from the man who has their attention. It's not good enough, my white brother, for you to come here and stand up and preach to this audience and say, I am your brother. You have to say that in front of your audience. Tell them that we're brothers. So on both sides, there is protectionism. People cave to the pressure. The pressure was so great that uh, the work stopped. Thank you. The work stopped and the people felt that the odds was insurmountable. 
as a result, the people were willing, were unwilling to persevere. Good God Almighty. And that became a major obstacle because if the people you, de you depend on to back you and to work with you, all of a sudden they quit on you. Praise the Lord. And, and, and I know that feeling. <laughs> Some that says I'm with you for life, but when the pressure got hot, Whoo! They ran because of the pressure. Ran uh, afraid of the association. You you still go there? Wooden is your pastor? Praise the Lord. You you still over there? Pressure. So to keep from having to defend your church at work, you went and joined the first church of the frigid air. Where well, the preacher says nothing. He offends no one. I'm preaching good. His sermon is more about himself and his wife and his children than the word of God. And uh, it's a, a, a sermon that's filled with, we're just going to love him up. And there's no offense, but the gospel is an offense. And I heard the Lord say, if you're ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father and the holy angels. I think I'd rather own Jesus. But it's, it's a whole different challenge when the folk that you're leading walk behind you a little slower. After a while, you look back and they're not there at all. Let me tell you, that, 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 can, that can cause you to question the mission. So uh, this is what uh, Zerubbabel was up against. The enemy did not get tired. That's where it is now. See, like to me, the world, they don't get tired. They're pushing all kinds of crazy stuff. All kind of crazy rules. Praise the Lord. Men uh, standing up there uh, arguing that they should be able to use the women's restroom because he's standing there with a wig on. Praise the Lord. You're a man. A man can't turn himself into a woman. A man can mutilate his body. A man can cut off his family. A man can have his uh, uh, Adam's apple shaved down. A man can have uh, hormones injected in him. You know what you got? Yeah, the man can put on pumps and the man can praise the Lord and can put on panties. And the man can do all those things. He can put on holes. You know what you got left? He can put boobs in. You, 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 you know what you got left? You got, you got you what you have left? It's what you started with. A man. Ain't no transgender nothing. That's a man. A man. You're just as much man as me. You just mutilated yourself, but you're still a man. And, and it's, it's just pathetic to see these women walking around trying to be boys. That's, oh, God. Oh, that's just terrible. That's just terrible. And now listen. I won't get many amens now. I won't get many, but now you have to be careful in some of these arenas because there's an agenda behind it. Title IX wasn't just about equality. It wasn't just about women being able to participate in sports like men. Most of the women were happy doing what they were doing. Most women happy being women, looking like a woman, acting like a woman, curved like a woman. Praise the Lord. Woman happy being a woman. One of the groups that was major behind that was the LGBT community. Because they know that in many of these arenas, to get her to perform at maximum performance, you got to tap into and pull out and draw on, not in every case, man. Next thing you know, they're running down the court high-fiving like me. Chest bumping like me. 
walking like men, can shoot that ball, can hit the ball, can do all that stuff, but act like men. Right. Sit like men, hug like men, tied it up, tied it up. run down the court. You don't even know it's a guy. Tied it up, a girl, tied it up like men, but can play. That's a spirit. And have these coaches, oh, I'm preaching. Boy, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna put me off. They're going to put me off the air. Have these coaches, these lesbians, get these girls in the locker rooms and mess them up. Then the next thing they do, they attack you by separating you from God. Because they have these things during church time. And you send the message. I'm not going to back up off of it. You send the message that is no longer God first. Your new God is that game. The new God, the question is not, I was talking to someone today, uh, uh, wasn't here. Today, said the family don't ask whether or not, uh, th th there's no question that whether or not the child is going to miss the game. That's a given. They may or may not get to church, depending on what the schedule is, but they ain't going to miss the game. That's idolatry. What the thing should be, well, what is God saying? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. What am I saying? I'm not saying that you shouldn't participate, but, but it ought not come at the expense of your soul. It ought not come at the expense of your failing to be your best self. Jesus said, what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That wasn't Soul, losing your soul, i.e. going to hell. And it doesn't exclude that either. But the actual proper interpretation is what are, what, are you, what are you profited if you gain the whole world, but in your gaining it, you become a monster. As you gain the world, you get there, but by the time you get there, oh, you, you, won, you won the Oscar but, but now you go both ways. You get on your knees and let a man put himself in you for that part. See, you got the Oscar. Yeah, you, you, you won the Tony Award. Oh my, you got the role in the movie, but you, you now play the part of a man with a man and you kiss the man on the screen. You got the role, but look at what it costs you. Look at what you showed you were willing to do to get that part. I wouldn't get the part. I wouldn't play the part if it's got to cost me myself. That's good preaching. And what's sad is you don't hear it enough. You should, you should find out what some of these people mean when they say, I paid my dues. Gain their trust. Gain their trust. And when they explain to you what dues are and are of what they were willing to do to get that, you get to walk out with your finger up. I don't think I want to. You know, all of a sudden, I'm going home. I think I'm going to get this job picking up this trash. And I'll empty the trash can and be who God made me before I be on the big screen and I done sold my soul and became somebody and uh, not do things that I said I would never do to get ahead. Now you clap your hands for Jesus and you give God praise for that good preaching. Somebody shout obstacles. They put pressure on Zerubbabel. And I'll be honest with you. When you combine all these things, the obstacles were mountainous. And here's the truth. Uh, they worked. They stopped the progress. 
Praise the Lord. Now, Zerubbabel, uh, bear with me here, was the legitimate heir to the throne of David. And, uh, but we see him in the text. He's not, he's not the king. That's why he should have been. He should have been king Zerubbabel. But Israel was still at this point under the rule of the Persians. Yes, right. yes. Darius was king. So he took Zerubbabel, who was of the lineage of David, and said, I'm going to elevate you, but I'm not going to put you where you belong. I'm going to make you governor. But Zerubbabel was in line to have been made king. God Almighty. A legitimate heir. I'm preaching something now. A legitimate heir to the throne of David. The Bible says in Matthew 1, 11 and 12, and uh, uh, Josiah begat uh, Jehonas. Jeconiah, excuse me. Let me read this uh, from the actual text. I want you to turn to Matthew's gospel. Praise the Lord. Chapter 1 and verse 11. This plane is trying to take off. Praise the Lord. It says, and Josiah, yeah, I like this, this, this reading, begat Jeconiah and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. See that? And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begat Shelethel, and Shelethel begat Zerubbabel. Spelled a little differently because the New Testament is in Greek, and the transliteration, and the Old Testament was in Hebrew. So Zerubbabel, who should have been king, was now governor. He was a part of the first deport uh, exiles to return back, but he ran into a wall. But how many know that we serve a God who keeps his promises? Amen. And uh, before I get to that, one of the things it does show, though, is that even though you may have royal blood, in your veins, you still have obstacles. Doesn't matter whose family you're a part of, obstacles will knock at your door. Amen. Some of you uh, think that others don't have obstacles. Everybody deals with obstacles. Praise the Lord. I wish I was in that family. Well, they seem like, seem like nothing happens to them. That's, that's because you're looking through the wrong lenses. Things happen to everybody. Amen. The devil, the devil gets to everyone's address. Amen. And then he leaves and he comes back. Satan leaves for a season and he returns. Everybody, everybody, nobody's exempt. So here is this legitimate heir to the uh, throne of David, which placed him, which placed him in the lineage of Jesus Christ. He's now the governor. He's a troubled man. But God had made Zerubbabel a promise. We're now in the month of February, but back in November, God spoke to Zerubbabel by the prophet Haggai, who by now had died. In Haggai uh, chapter 2, we find these words. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. That's verse 21. And then in verse 23, he says, And in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, Zerubbabel. I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, son of Shealtel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee saith the Lord of hosts. That signet means I'm going to give you a ring, a ring indicating authority. 
good, good God Almighty, you will act as God's legitimate Davidic ruler. I'm going to give you power. This right was taken away from King Jehoiakim. Read it in Jeremiah 22 and 24. Jehoiakim left, lost it, but God said to uh, Zerubbabel, I'm going to give it back to you. Isn't God good? Have you ever noticed sometimes when the Lord gives you a word, trouble break out. Sometimes when God promises promise you uh, smooth sailing before you can get home from church, the motor blows. Get a traffic ticket. Somebody call you on the way home to disturb you. And you say, God, I thought you said smooth sailing. That's just the devil trying to get you to disbelieve. So you got to know how to wait on the Lord and just keep on believing. God said, I'm going to give you authority. And with the promise of that authority, everything had stopped. Obstacles everywhere. But I'm glad that we serve a God who keeps his word. Bible tells us that that night, even though Haggai had gone home to be with the Lord, God woke up Zechariah again with his fifth vision. And the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord said, the angel that talked with me came and waked me as a man wakened out of his sleep. Good God Almighty. And said unto me, what seest thou? Can you see Zachariah with sleep still in his eyes? Wondering how will I get to sleep at all tonight? I've already seen four visions. And God, what do you want now? And the Lord woke him up and said, Tell me, what do you see? And uh, the prophet looked out and said, I see a candlestick. I see this elaborate huge candlestick and it's made of gold, pure, made of gold and there's a bowl on the top of it and there are seven lamps thereon with seven pipes and seven lamps, hallelujah, which are upon, upon the top and I notice it's flanked by two olive trees and if you know anything about bible symbols oil is a symbol of the spirit good god almighty and god didn't give them two gallons of oil but he gave him two olive trees which symbolize an unlimited supply had he given him a cruise of oil the cruise could have run out had he given them a barrel of oil, the oil could have run out. But if he gave him an olive tree, the olive tree would keep on producing. I'm glad today that I have the olive tree. I have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives you power to keep on keeping on. Good God Almighty. Everybody in here today knows that life is filled with obstacles. The devil is always trying to get in your way. But aren't you glad that you have something on the inside that says keep going? The songwriter said something deep down inside me keeps telling me to go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You'll never make it. Hallelujah, if you let your obstacles stop you, if you wait for a sunshiny day before you will get started, if you, if you wait for all your ducks to be lined up in a row before you get started, then you'll never get started. You have to go on and try to build that business. You have to go on and try to make that marriage work. You have to go on and try to fight anyhow. I know there are people around you telling you that you can't make it, but you got to make up, make up your mind 
that I'm going with Jesus and if the Lord be my strength and he is I'll be able to make it he said the trees are beside me and I don't know what they're here for and the angel that talked with him said don't you know what these trees are here for he said no my lord and then the angel gave him something he said this is the word of the lord that i want you to go and find zerubbabel and tell zerubbabel i know he's been looking at all of his obstacles. I know he's been looking at all of the hindrances, the barriers, and all of the things that's been before him. I know he said to himself, I don't have an army. I don't have enough followers. I don't have enough help. But you go tell him that God told me to tell you that it's not by might, it's not by army, it's not by power, it's not by wealth, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. He said, stop looking at what you don't have and pay attention to who you do have. I've got Jesus on my side yeah yeah lord you ought to wave your hand if you've been filled with the holy ghost don't cry about him who won't say amen don't cry about him who walks away from you because the holy ghost will supply what you need to get through He's all I need to get by. He's all I need to overcome the obstacles. He's all I need. Ah, yeah. Yeah, Lord. Ah, yeah. Somebody wave your hand and tell the Lord, Lord, you're all I need. You're all God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You all right, young man? Will your arms wave? Stand up and wave them and tell the Lord, you're too young for that. Lord, you're all I need to get by. All I need to make it over. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I told you somebody's going to shout today and take advantage of the place that they hold because I dropped a little hint early in the service. I told you that Zerubbabel was a heir to the Davidic throne. I told you that Zerubbabel was a legitimate heir. Well, I thank God with Zerubbabel being a legitimate heir. God said, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? He didn't say before just anybody, but before Zerubbabel. Why Zerubbabel? Because Zerubbabel is a legitimate heir. And Romans 8 and 17 said, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and join us with Christ. Saints, we are legitimate heirs. We are, if you're saved, you have a right to call on the Lord. If you're saved, you have a right Good God Almighty, Crystal and Patrick Jr., Pamela, John Patrick, thank you, Jesus, and John Jr., John Amanchuku, they have a place in me that not everybody has because they are legitimate heirs. They can call on me and it'll move me 
on a level because they're my children and my grandchildren. Well, I'm glad that I can call on the Lord. Lord, I'm your child. Lord, I'm your son. Lord, somebody call him like a legitimate heir. Just high five somebody tell them, I got a right. I got a right. You got a right. If you're saved, you got a right to call on Jesus. If you're saved, you got a right to say to that mountain, get out of my way. Get out of my life. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yes. Let the legitimate heirs praise the Lord. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he heareth. How many worshipers do we have in here? How many folk who are living the word of God where you can call him and he will hear your cry and I challenge you. throw down the gauntlet. I challenge somebody. I challenge you today. I'm almost finished, but I challenge you to put your chief obstacle on your mind. I challenge you to think about what the devil has been trying to do to stop you to get in your way. I challenge you to, de- to let God build up in you a spirit of defiance to let the Lord begin to build up in you the spirit of a fighter and say to that mountain so big mountain who do you think you are you need to speak to your obstacle tell that obstacle who are you how dare you to get in my way Hallelujah, you're a tall mountain, but your height is in vain because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you ought to challenge that mountain and say what Jesus said. Jesus walked up one day on his way somewhere. He was headed Good God Almighty, hallelujah. When they said, the Bible said in Mark chapter 11 and verse 12, he said, on the morrow, hallelujah, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. He left Bethany and he saw a fig tree, walked up to the tree to get figs because there were leaves on the tree. And if a fig tree had leaves, then a fig tree should have figs. And this tree had leaves, but no figs. Jesus cursed that fig tree. When he cursed it, nothing happened. When he cursed it, not one leaf fell to the ground. When he cursed it, the tree just stood there. But the next day, verse 15 says, 
and they come to Jerusalem and then Jesus went into the temple and he did the things that he had to do there but verse 20 says in the morning as they passed by they saw that same fig tree the high was dried up from the root good God almighty when Jesus cursed it it didn't seem like anything had happened but the next day when they came they saw that the tree had dried up and Jesus told them have faith in God will you preach to your neighbor and tell your neighbor to have faith in God ah neighbor go and preach to him ah neighbor have faith have faith in God yeah Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. When your pathway is lonely, he sees and knows all the way you trod. You're never alone. Hallelujah. Never alone are the least of his children. Have faith. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He's on the throne. Have faith in God. He watches over his own. Have faith in God. He cannot fail. He must prevail. Have faith in God. Say to your mountain, be thou removed. Jesus said, tell the mountain, be thou removed. And believe in your heart that the things you say will come to pass. You will have what you say I need some faith people who have faith not in me not in this church not in your country not in your denomination but you have faith in God how many still know that our God is able that our God is a miracle worker that our God is a healer that our God is a way maker have faith in God yeah he'll pick you up he'll turn you around he'll change your situation have faith in god live holy walk upright and watch him work have faith have faith in god Woo! get your praise on lady Somebody shout, ah, believe God, ah, believe God, ah, believe God, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty, 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 yes, sir, would you praise his name? Woo!
और आपसे को You're coming down. Mountain. You're coming down. You're going to be made level ground. Oh, you up here now. I got to look up at you. All these obstacles, you, you're way up. But the word of God is, says, the, the prophecy is. God's bringing you down to level ground. I won't even have to lift. I can walk, I can drag, I can just, I don't have to even lift my feet to walk on you because you're level. How many know that God knows how to level things off? Do I have anybody here who can say, he level things off in my life? Yeah! Oh! Glory to God. I'm bringing it down. But I'm going to do it for Zerubbabel. Because he is a legitimate heir. I'm, le I'm legitimate. How many, let me see the hands of the saved folk. You're legitimate. You have a right. You have a right to call on the Father. In it you get ready in the name of Jesus you have a right to expect the Lord to fix it to take care of it to handle it because we're legitimate heirs so regardless regardless of the mountain Regardless to the obstacles, regardless to the things trying to block your progress, not irregardless, because irregardless actually is not a word. Regardless. That's just, that's just people just use that. They made it up. You can't find it. It's not a word. It's just the way we talk. Amen. But regardless to the mountain, God is able. God is a